Hey, what's up? My name is James Luke and I'm a visual effects artist and I'm going to show you how to easily import videos into Unreal Engine 5 with alpha channel, shadows, and high quality reflections. Today we're going to talk about the newest release of Unreal Engine 5. If you didn't already know, Unreal Engine 5.1 released the other day and is packed with a ton of new features. But the one that really caught my eye was the new Media Play Actor. Now what the Media Play Actor lets you do is import your video files into your Unreal Engine project and then directly into your scene and sequencer. So let's go ahead and jump into Unreal Engine and let me show you the new and improved way to import your video files into your Unreal Engine scene. So I've got a pretty basic scene here and it's just to give you a little bit of an overview of the Media Play Actor. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna prep your footage. Now you can either export it out as a PNG sequence or an EXR sequence. Now Epic Games actually recommends doing an EXR sequence, but I mean, you do you. But also with the Media Play Actor, you can just drag and drop your video files directly into your scene. Now in my very limited testing, I found that you can do the three main file types mp4, .mov, and .avi. It may work with others, those are just the ones that I've tried out. So I've got one of my more recent TikTok videos that I uploaded, which by the way, go follow. So all I gotta do is just drag and drop it directly into the project. And as you can see right here, it created a file media source, but all I gotta do is just drag it into the scene, maybe rotate it over 90 degrees, drag it up, make it a little bit bigger just so you can see. And all we gotta do is hit simulate and you're done. Just like that. Look at that, it's playing in the scene. Look at that. Now this is all you need and congratulations, you're done. But if you wanna get it playing in sequencer for cinematics like I usually need, then all you gotta do is just create a really quick sequence and chuck it in. So let's go and do that. So I just got a quick little sequence here I just opened up and all I gotta do is just take it. Let's go track actor sequence added in. Now it's going to have this pop up here. It's going to say, would you like to disable autoplay for the media play actor? It's recommended. Just go ahead and do that. It's what they recommend. As you can see, it kind of squashed things down a bit. We don't really want that. So let's just drag it out to it. looks about right. Maybe there. It's a little difficult to say. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. And there we go. Now it's playing in sequencer. Just like that. Beautiful. But what if you have a video with alpha channel or transparency? like a green screen key or something. Well, let me go ahead and show you how to do that. To pull up the content browser, right click, go into media, and then image media source. Name it whatever you wanna name it, double click it. And then right here where it says sequence path, you're gonna to wanna to click these three little dots. And then you're just gonna browse on your computer until you find something. I personally am gonna be using a PNG sequence with an alpha channel from an ad video that I did for Meta. And there we go, I have it selected. Go ahead and click save, there we go. Now all we gotta do is just drag it in. And it's the same deal as before. You rotate it over, pull it up, simulate. There we are, but there's no alpha channel. All right, here's how to fix that. Now, the reason why there's no alpha channel is because of the default material settings that Unreal Engine has set up for the Media Play Actor. So to fix it, select the object, scroll down to the material right here, double click that to open it up. Where it says blend mode here, you're gonna check that off and then click Mask. Go ahead and click save. And there we go. He's a, he's a little transparent little fellow. Let's go ahead and make him a little bit bigger. Scale him up some. It looks about right. Maybe that's right. Honestly, I don't even know. It's hard to tell. But there we go. Here we are playing in sequencer with transparency. But as you can see, he has no shadow. The sun's facing him. He should be casting a shadow this direction. But he's not. So here's how to get that. Go into the details panel here on the right and type in shadow. Up here at the top, you're gonna to scroll down a little bit and there's a property here called dynamic shadow. Click that checkbox and there we go. He's got, he's got a shadow, but he's still not really cemented in the scene enough as much as I would like him to be. And the reason why I have this little water plane here is to show you how to get high quality reflections on your media plate actors. So what you're gonna do is go to your place actors panel Go down to visual effects, drag in a post process volume, go here to the details panel like before and type in infinite. And then check the checkbox, infinite extent unbound. Now what this does is it basically set the dimensions of the post process volume to infinity. So it doesn't matter where you are in your scene, the changes that we make inside the post process volume will happen anywhere in the scene. Now if we go back up here to the top and we type in Lumen, I'm just going to go ahead and select the global illumination method. We want Lumen and I'm just going to go ahead and check off all of the rest of these 
lumen options here. I want absolutely everything lumen reflections, lumen, yes, that's important. You want that. Just gonna go and check off everything. Seems good to me. Now, next, go back up here to the top and type in reflections. And then we get a bunch more options, you'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and check off the rest of these just in case, but -da 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 -da. I'm just checking boxes. Now, if you see up here at the top, we have high quality translucency reflections. You can see here, and we don't have the best. He's not really cemented into the scene. We got this weird little shape here as a reflection. That's not what we want. So we click this second little checkbox. So we have already enabled it. And then for some reason, we gotta enable it again. I don't know why we have two checkboxes for it, but we do. So. Go ahead and click that and you can see the magic. So we have before, after, before, after. You can even see the water reflecting the sky a bit better too. Look at this. Look at this. Before, after, before, after. It's crazy. Look at this. Now I actually look like I'm cemented into the scene a bit. Also, just for demonstration purposes, I have a shot of this environment that I made uh, in Unreal Engine 5 and I rendered out this shot and just to show you the reflections of the water and how cool this looks with the high quality reflections enabled i can just scrub through you can see the lightning actually sort of reflecting off the water a bit it's actually super super cool and there you go it's as easy as that you now have a png sequence with alpha playing in unreal engine 5 sequencer with shadows and reflections but what if you don't have a png sequence or an exr sequence what if your video file is a dot mov file with alpha or a dot avi the process is the exact same you literally just drag and drop it in an unreal engine go into the material settings and change the blend mode to mask go into the shadow settings and turn on cast dynamic shadow and then you enable high quality reflections like we just did and then you're done now i must warn you the performance with the media played actors and sequencer is not the best it's honestly about the same as if you just had media player assets in the sequencer. In my testing, I've noticed that when I have about three video files playing at once in sequencer, it starts to slow down a good bit. So depending on your PC specs and the resolution of the video files you're trying to play inside sequencer, you might want to consider right clicking some of the tracks and clicking the checkbox next to mute. This will allow you to put more video files in sequencer without bogging it down too much. But now this is important. You have to remember to go back in and uncheck the mute checkbox when you render. I've made that mistake before and I had to go back through, unmute everything, and then re-render again. It was really annoying. Just thought I'd throw it out there. So there you have it. Now I didn't go into too much detail or depth here because this was just meant to be an overview video of the Media Play Actor and some things that I learned and figured out when I was testing it. If you learned something new, feel free to click the like button down below as it helps push out the video to other people who might be interested in the video. Also be sure to subscribe because I got more Unreal Engine 5 tutorials and workflow videos coming out soon. It's free and you can always just change your mind later. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer and help you out down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow me on my socials link below and I'll catch you in the next one.